Hello, I'm Jeff Pierce, and this is Ethiopia. We're in Desi. We're at a crime scene, for lack of a better term for it, the murder of heritage. The TPLF came in here and trashed the city's museum. Just wrecked it completely. And what makes it worse is that some of those who did it might have been sleeper agents for the Tigray People's Liberation Front, who lived side by side with the regular residents of this city, and then decided to trash their own hospital, wreck their own hotels, and then steal from their own history. Just to let you know, this is where our story will end, at a closed hotel in Addis. There's a point to make, but it's only clear if you really look at what happened in Desi and nearby Kambolcha. Before the TPLF took over Desi about a couple of months ago, this hospital was so advanced, had such amazing equipment, you could have parked it right in Toronto or Boston, and it would have been state-of-the-art. It normally sees half a million people a year. It had an oxygen plant. The TPLF caused about $9 million in damage. This is what's left of it. All the computers or their hard drives were stolen. They wrecked the dental machinery, and this is what's left of the ultrasound room. The drug supply and medical equipment storage. A mass grave was found, and 13 bodies of federal soldiers had to be taken away to be properly buried. One of the medical staff, Temesgen, showed photojournalist Jamal Countess and me around. They are trying to rebuild here, but it will be slow going. Yeah, yeah, so much damage, but, but we try to help the people. We must be to help the people. Because of that, we try to so solve the, our problems on uh, hand materials, and uh, especially to uh, count the helping the other areas and the energies and the other, we found to the other people. It will be the same for the main campus of Wolo University in Desi, where again there are millions of dollars in damages. The president took us around. If you want to know the true sound of the TPLF, it's feet crunching on broken glass. They were really struggling to distract. Yeah. How, how much did they in, in invested, not only for lotting, but also for distracting? I mean, it's very hard to, to, to crush a UPS, you know. Yeah. UPS is a very hard uh, computer device. <laughs> can, you, can you get here? Mm The TPLF hammered these buildings with some form of artillery, though no one was hurt as the campus was evacuated. But we were told that as bad as this looks, the university is more devastated by the theft and vandalism of equipment. All the big instruments, most important laboratory instruments, were looted. Uh, you can see how they can play with the microscope. Mm -hmm. The COVID process was done here. Mm. The COVID, you know... Uh, this is the dressing room. Mm -hmm. The extraction room, the master mix preparation. It was highly furnished with all the instruments needed mm -hmm. in order to conduct a COVID laboratory center. Mm -hmm. So we have nothing. The president believes there's no accident that the most important equipment was either stolen or destroyed. I think the veterinarian came here. Even experts came here. That's what the hospital said. To destroy? No, our experts, mm -hmm. we were looking for the differences, how they identified it. Mm -hmm. So according to the experts, mm -hmm. they supposed that experts should visit it. Experts from the group mm -hmm. visited this lab. At the Lul Makonin Hotel in Kambolcha, 
They stole 97 television sets. They stole chairs and espresso machines. Not a single room left untouched. Even the fire hoses taken. The hotel's finance manager says there were those who welcomed the junta into Desi. The TPLF wrecked, looted, and loaded up by night, but by day they forced locals at gunpoint to act out looting and filmed them doing it. It's great when you can make up your own evidence. How do you cause destruction on this scale? You have help. Alamu McConan ran a construction and furniture business in Cambodia, destroyed by the TPLF, and he recalls how some of their operatives snuck into town pretending to be internally displaced persons. As I mentioned earlier, we went to Desi's museum. Jamal attracted a small entourage of little wannabe models. But the kids won't learn anything from this place now. It's only good for them to run around and play in the wreckage. The junta either stole or destroyed priceless artifacts, the phone that Menelik used to talk to foreign leaders, a set of binoculars he used at the Battle of Adwa, clay products more than 450 years old, relics of silver and gold. In one spot, they literally defecated on Ethiopia's history. At the palace of Mikhail of Wallo, father of the ousted emperor Iyasu, they also looted and vandalized. This building here is a marker 1936, which means it's significant to the war I wrote about in my book Prevail, the second war with the Italians. So yes, I'm taking the damage to these grounds very personally. This is part of why we call TPLF fascists. The point of all this vandalism is a headline. Knowledge should be ours alone. Technology should be ours alone. We're taking it. You can't have it. The past can be smashed up, rewritten. The past is only what we decide. So here we are back again in Addis at this hotel. Why? Because of what it means. Because some people don't pay attention to history or even the recent background of events. A TPLF member of the executive committee, Alam Gebra Wahid, had a permanent suite on the top floor. This place was on the list of the UK Embassy as a recommended spot for folks to stay. You know what else it was? It's where the TPLF reportedly kept a hidden cache of weapons, waiting for their moment in this city for the same conditions as Desi. The source of ours put it very well. When the Western media made a big fuss over the TPLF supposedly being about two hours away from the capital, they scoffed. You don't get it, we were told. The enemy was already here. They were hiding in plain sight all along. And for Western media operations, the focus was on the arrests of Tigrayans. Living in Addis, a valid cause for concern. But these reporters never bothered to ask about the context. Why were there arrests? What was the background to all this? Meanwhile, Ethiopians might well wonder something else instead. What if the TPLF got their moment in Addis? What if they pulled out all those hidden weapons in the hotels?